Hey Queens, it's your girl Quanita Charnel, and today I'm showing you how to slay this Cubana Bounce Crochet wig, okay? I'm showing you all the typical products that you need, but what I want to draw emphasis to is the cap. I will put the details down below in the description box, but what I'm showing you here is the cap number. This is how you get consistent caps, especially if you like them going forward, whether you buy them on Amazon or your local beauty supply. Always look for that four digit code in the right corner. Mm, excuse me. So moving forward, this cap is extremely flexible, very breathable. It has large holes on the sides and in the back, and then the small holes are on the top. It also comes with two combs in the front and like a little tag in the back so that you know you're not putting your thing on backwards, okay? And please don't judge my ashy hands and the fact that I need a manicure. Ladies, I'm going through a little bit of a struggle right now. I'm in between appointments. So just work with me, okay? Work with the girl. Okay, please and thank you. Anyways, <laughs> once you secure that wig down, whether you have T-pins or push pins, sis, I'm not here to judge, you are ready to get slain, okay? All right, y'all, so this is the Cuvana Bounce hair in the color 950, and what I'm showing you here, even though this is sped up a bit, is how to separate the hair carefully. Please take your time. It's not a rush. Like, this, this video may be 20 minutes, but it took me about two hours to do this style. So you wanna shake the hair down, just like you saw me do, and kinda separate the hair as it naturally wants to separate. Otherwise, if you kinda force it apart, you're going to create more unnecessary frizz. You know, we like it, you know, kind of messy, kind of frizzy, but what we don't want to do is have every piece of hair look crazy before we can even get the wig completed. So here I am showing you again, shaking it down and gently running my hands downward. So as you can see, it separates super easy. Um, what I was showing you with my hands, in case I didn't say it before, is I like this um, netted cap better than the braided cap because I'm able to actually see and gauge where I want to visually put my rows of crochet. So I just go across and then I go across and then I go across and then I leave space in between so that the hair is not overly full. With this wig specifically too, because I know somebody is gonna ask, why didn't you start at the bottom? I didn't start at the very bottom of this cap is because if I wanna pull this hair up in like a ponytail or have it in a pineapple with a scarf wrapped around it, then the hair is not gonna be caught under the scarf and I can actually have more security by leaving that little bit of space and I can attach some like uh, bobby pins there. So that is why I did it. But y'all can see, very easy to do, very simple. That's why I made this video a little bit longer to kind of show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna let you guys watch and see how the magic works. Okay, queens, this is just me reminding you to be mindful with your spacing so that your hair doesn't get too, well, your wig doesn't get too full. And this is about a pack and a half of the wig so far. So you can see how full it gets with just a pack and a half. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier about pulling the hair up in a pineapple or wearing it in different styles. Is that space under there? You can put bobby pins and then tie your scarf and that'll give you added security without having hair there and causing unnecessary tangling and all that stuff because this is synthetic hair, okay? So we gotta work smart, not hard. 
but whatever you do on one side, y'all know me, you do it right there on the other side. So however you put this hair in, whatever's comfortable for you, whatever works for you, just make sure you do the same thing on both sides. So again, I'm gonna show you a couple times in real time how to put this hair in. It's no different than how I've been putting it in before. But for those of you who need a little bit more help, a little bit more practice, a little bit more visual, this is why I did it this way. So again, I'm gonna stop talking, you're gonna watch, and we're gonna continue with the sleigh. All right, y'all, so this is one side completed and I'm showing you the spacing in between each of the curls. So regardless of how full that you think my wigs are, even though that they are, because you know I love big hair, I still space this out because we still have to customize this and I don't want too much hair up here, especially when it's starting to get warm out because it's gonna be hot, honey, hot. So I'm just showing you what the edge of the cap looks like and use your discretion to fill it in as you need. Now this is what it looks like when both sides are done. So all we have to do now it's just filling the top. You see how spacious, I'm not spacious. You see how full it is, but like I said, keep in mind that I space out my curls intentionally. So that way you don't see a bunch of cap, but you're also not heavy with hair either. And this is what it looks like again when I'm telling you about how you can pull this hair up and do a whole bunch of styles. So this hair is quite versatile and I cannot wait to wear this in really cute like pineapples and updos and all kinds of stuff. So again, this is just me showing you. We're gonna take it the same way we did before, do our little rows by rows, leaving space in between until we fill in the cap. So not hard, not complicated, very consistent, keep it neat. And you see that we are on our last two packs out of six. I only use six packs to complete this entire wig. So as I keep saying, watch, do as I do, and then I'm gonna stop talking.
right, y'all, we have completed the wig. She is closing at the top. She is full. She is giving very much space to complete, okay? So this is just me showing you exactly what the wig looks like. So as you can see in the front, if you wanna add more hair to that edge part that's gonna be close to your hairline, you're more than welcome to. Or I would even suggest if you wanna actually attach this wig, attach crochet to your hair and braids and then pull it through the cap. So that way the cap is actually staying on your head. So that's just a little tidbit that you can do if you don't wanna take this wig off at night. But with this type of hair, I do highly recommend that you take it off because it can get frizzy and get frizzier as you lay on and sleep on and stuff like that. So now we're about to get into the fun stuff, ladies. This is about to be real critical. We about to bring out the luscious. We about to start making this into my signature luscious styles, okay? So y'all stay tuned. <laughs> as you can see, it's time to make her luscious, okay? So what you wanna do while the cap is still on your mannequin head is pull apart the curls in like the back and the sides. Do not touch the top of the head until you actually put the wig on your head. And that's, as you can see, that's exactly what I'm doing. Because if you separate too much or you fluff too much before you actually put it on, you're gonna feel overwhelmed. So move some of the hair out of the way, go to the bottom, the sides and kind of pull that hair apart pull those curls apart and take your time doing this do not be rough because like i said this hair can get frizzy it can get big and what i'm showing you here is another tip to add more volume put your hands like you like it was on your head and and kind of reach up or reach under to kind of give it that added volume before we even get to the part where we put it on our head and, and continue customizing so i'm going to let you all watch and then i'll be back later All right, so this is the wig straight off the mannequin head after we did just minor fluffing, minor customizations, and you know what time it is. Baby, it's time to cut. And before y'all get scissor happy, frame your face first. With this wig, and generally with any of my crochet wigs, I always give myself a little bang, whether it hangs down in front or I can move it to the side. But the key to making this cut work or any cut with crochet hair is cutting downward at an angle, as well as cutting a little bit of hair at a time. This is synthetic hair. Or even if you have bundles, it doesn't matter. Once you cut it, baby, it's not gonna come back. So take your time, cut a little bit of hair at a time, and cut downward at an angle. And once you kinda get the layered look that you like, cut across to maintain that shape or that length that you're going for. I continue to cut at an angle for the entire wig because that's what I wanted is a layered look. I didn't want a blunt cut, I didn't want a blunt bang, I wanted a layered. And as you can see, now I'm working my way around the wig, fluffing it, separating it as I need to, and cutting at an angle. I cannot stress this enough because somebody's gonna ask me, sis, how are you cutting the wig? You're cutting at an angle, you cut a little bit at a time. Because when I show y'all how much hair I end up cutting off, you're going to be surprised. So, like I said, keep watching, take your time, and then I'll show you the next part. shape coming in y'all see the shape coming in your girl is about to make this wig slay honey oh my god i just killed myself with the job that i've been doing not to toot my own horn but baby toot toot back it up back it up beep beep okay but anyway no i just wanted to come in and check in with you guys and let you know once you start getting the shape that you want you know once you're done cutting fluffing and all of that kind of stuff just be mindful go around the wig again take your time and you know, play with it, feel it, you know. 
All right, now after all that hard work that we just did, this is all the hair that I cut off. A handful, literally a handful. That's it. It's giving, giving, giving luscious. It's giving luscious. Excuse me looking like dirt, but it's giving luscious, okay? Luscious, y'all know how I like it. Luscious. Then I'm gonna show y'all the other wig too. Also giving, giving. Luscious and this color. Okay, y'all, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm gonna just say it anyway. The only difference between this wig and the one that you just see me make is that I pull the hair part more and I cut it shorter. I want it very much fro, very much full, very much like big hair rounded. Okay, so that is why my bang is much shorter, it's much frizzier. It's not resting on the shoulder, but if I wanted to make this bigger, I can. But as you can see, this is quite fuzzy and the wig is only a couple days old, okay? Literally, literally. So be aware, if you don't like fuzziness in your hair, this is not the hair for you. Because I don't wanna hear anything in the comments about, sis, it's fuzzy. I didn't know it was gonna be fuzzy, since it's gonna be fuzzy. Boom. This is why it's gonna be fuzzy. This is what happens. So, if you don't like fuzz, you don't like your hair looking like you've had it on for a week or two or three, again, this is not the hair for you, okay? But, to my big girl, big hair lovers, y'all see the vibes. Y'all see it, y'all see it. <laughs> y'all see the little lush, this is little luscious. Okay, we're gonna call this little luscious. This is very much little luscious. Bow. Here's the back. And probably the side. Other side. Boom. 